Hi everyone, I believe that this is on already. Welcome to my webinar about the Anna Rudolph Master Method. This is the first time I have produced video series for iChess and it's an honor to me to present it to you today in this webinar. Now this is the first time I'm using Google Hangout on YouTube, so please do let me know if you hear and see everything clearly. I'll monitor the chat. So for now, I see Carlos is here. Hi, Carlos. And I'm waiting for every one of you to join. So in a few minutes, we will start the lecture. It is going to be about something that I prepared for the method. We will practice how to evaluate positions and how to know what is the right plan, because we often find ourselves in situations where there are so many tempting moves, but you're not sure which one to pick. You are not sure what shall be the right plan. So today we are going to practice what to do when you have no idea what is the right way to go. Now, please let me know in the chat if everything is okay. Hi, Chessblade. Hi, Anil. Hi, JSP. Hi, Sakritko. So glad that you are all here on iChess. This is a live webinar about my master method. We are waiting for everyone to join. And in a few minutes, I will bring up the chessboard so we can get the learning started. We will analyze a couple of positions and you will need to interact all the time. So I'll be asking you loads of questions and you will need to use this thing here and let me know about the right answers. So I think everything is okay. Thank you, Sakritko, for confirming it. Hi, Meet Parik. Hi, Gutierrez, Mani, Mashi. So many of you are joining. I'm just happy that this is actually working because I know that, I mean, I don't know about you, but if you have seen me on other live streams, I'm clumsy. Sometimes I don't get these things right. Technology, live, first time using Google Hangout. Yeah, but let's say that so far, so good. Everything is working. And I'm very happy that you joined me for this webinar. So let me know in the chat if you know what is my training method about or you want me to talk about it more because there's only one more day to get it. For one more, one more day, the Anna Rudolph method, my brand new training course is on a 50% discount price. So if you don't know what it is and whether it, you should get it, whether it would help your chess, then let me know in the chat and I answer your questions. So today, take it as a webinar about strategy, planning and how to know what is the right evaluation of the position first and then what shall you do in that particular position. That is what we are going to practice. But it's also a Q&A about my course. So if you have any questions, whether it's the right course for you, what is in the course, any questions, do let me know in the chat and I'll answer your questions. So this is a session where you can ask anything you like. Now let's bring up the chessboard and start with the first, first position and in between positions, we will talk more about the method. So now please cross fingers that I will manage to share my chessboard with you. Give me a second. I, I don't think you see it at the moment, but now you should. Please do let me know if you see the chessboard. And if you do, then let me tell you that you shall start thinking. In this position, it is wise to move, but hey, I don't want any moves. I don't want you to think about any moves right now. All I want you to do is, if you already have ordered my training course, then you have free printables. These are PDF guides that I have prepared for you. They are written by me, edited by me. I mean, it's a big thing that I can edit something, right? So yeah, they are edited by me, written by me, and they are there for you as a guideline. Now, if you don't have my training course yet, then let me help you what is written on the paper. One of these sheets is about how to evaluate positions. And I thought that's very important because in those moments, like here, let's say that you're playing this game with the white pieces and there are many tempting moves like bishop a6, maybe bishop b5, knight g5 or queen e4 or c4. And how do you know which one is the right way to go? Because some of these moves are on the queen's side, others are on the king's side. 
one of these moves is a direct attack to the rook, another is maybe a future attack to the king, one is a pawn push, will you promote a pawn? What shall you play for is the first question you should answer before even looking for moves. So first of all, we will evaluate this position on the board and then we shall look for the right plan. I'm not even sure if you see my cam, but I'm pointing at all sorts of stuff right now. Maybe you don't even see me. Just let me know in the chat. I think if you see the chessboard, it's already cool. So first of all, let's evaluate this position. I think you didn't even see the sheet when I was showing it, right? Okay, so I was showing you the sheet and I was taking it for granted that you see both the chessboard and the sheet. So this is the evaluation process we are going to follow. Then if you see it well, written by me, designed by me. Number one, let's go through it very quickly and then we switch back to the board and you shall answer to these points. So number one, you will evaluate first the material. This is the easiest. How many soldiers are there on the board? Number two, the pawn structure, whether the position is open, closed, you will look at who has more space, control of the center, very important. Then open files, ranks, diagonals, the pawn chain, whether there are weaknesses, weak pawns, and weak squares we will look for. Third, and sometimes the most important, if not always, <laughs> king safety. Oh, that's a big one. We'll look for whose king is safer, and if the opponent's king is not very safe, then what shall you do about that? Number four, peace activity. That's obvious. We will compare the pieces, which piece is good, which needs to be improved. And number five, the context. Now, what does that mean? It means that you should, first of all, know whose turn it is. Then you should have a look at what was the last move or the last moves. And what does the opponent want? Because let's not forget, it's a game of two and your opponent is also planning something. So we will always put everything in context. What does my opponent want? Whether I should prevent his threat or I can go on with my plan. We will always think about the opponent as well and we will be a step ahead of him. You will see. So let's bring up the chessboard. Remember these five points and let's give a moment to everyone to evaluate the position. What do you think about this position in terms of material, pawn structure, king safety, peace activity? And then we will put it in context i give you a minute think about this let me know in the chat what do you think which factors are the most important in this position oh sorry the google message thank you <laughs> thank you for letting me know you see i didn't realize there was a message but now i will i will be quiet and let you think All right, let's go through it together. I've seen some really good thoughts in the chat. So first of all, let's point out the most important in this position. This guy, not green. I would like to make it red, right? Can I make it red? Imagine it's red. I know something went wrong with my colors. Now it's red. I like to color it red when it's weak, but now these letters appeared. Oh, never mind. I should never click here and there because then you see those letters appear. Bear with me for a moment. I just wanted to remove, remove those letters. So here we are. I will not color anything because it seems that it will mess up my, my chess base. Therefore, let's go back to what we were talking about. Main factor in this position is the king. Black is undeveloped. So that 
basically means that he hasn't castled yet and he hasn't finished developing his pieces. Now, king safety is a huge factor. In many positions, we will first look at the king, even if on the list it's not the first. If the king is in trouble, you can even have a rook down because the king is so important. Rook down, piece down, queen down, whatever you can sacrifice for mate, it's still fine. So the king is the most important factor. The king is in the middle of the board. What shall we do about that? If black has time, then he will castle. He played b6 in this position, which uh, is the position that we should discuss. But next move could be castle or h6 castle. But certainly, if you give time to your opponent, he will finish his development. He's not there to help you. So he wants to place this king in a safe place, maybe first h6 and then castle. But it is white to move. So we know that. Black is lacking development. His king is still in the middle of the board. White's pieces are all very well placed. Thanks to this pawn structure, e5, d4, c3, white has more space, better control of the center, and the more space gives you lots of squares for your pieces. So that is always great when in the middle game you have more space. It also means that you can activate your pieces easier. You can also observe among black's pieces that he has a knight on the rim. Now, this normally is not a good place for the knight, is it? He's aiming for the c4 square, which would be nice for black. But with the king in the middle of the board, this is definitely not the position where you can go and jump around with your knight just to get an outpost. The c4 square is an outpost for black's knight, but this is not a positional situation. Here, black should have finished his development first and then go for a knight outpost and per pressure against this backward pawn. So since it is white to move, and we know that white is better developed, white has more space, white has better control of the center, white's king is much safer, while the black king is still in the middle of the board, what would you do to take the initiative and take advantage of the fact that right now it is white to move and you might be able to prevent his costling? So how to start take a, to take advantage of this king in the middle of the board? i let you think for a moment. Let me know in the chat what would you play here. Now you can start thinking about a concrete move, a concrete plan. Yes, Johan, you were right that the black pawn was on b6. That's black's last move, which is definitely not the best move because if you have your king in the middle of the board, you shouldn't really be pushing queen side pawns. You should take care of your king first. So well pointed out, Johan. All right, I see Johan suggesting bishop g5 and Sammy saying knight g5. Now, those are the two candidate moves you should look at so very well pointed out those are definitely the main candidate moves i have an entire bonus chapter on how to create a list of candidate moves in my master method and then how to decide which one is better now we don't have time to go through everything that i cover in 17 hours because my master method is in total 17 hours of instructions but in a nutshell here you would think knight g5 is one candidate move and bishop g5 is another. You will always try to prefer the more forcing one. So if you compare knight g5 and bishop g5, which one is more threatening? Knight g5 attacks the f7 pawn. That is very much threatening. Bishop g5 threatens to trade bishops, which is which could be useful, of course, in order to force the black king capture on e7 but that doesn't seem to be that much of a trouble for black. So knight g5 is more threatening because the f7 pawn is hanging, the h7 pawn is hanging. You have opened the f5 for the rook. So in this position, black's responses are very much limited. He cannot just play whatever he wants. He needs to deal with this threat of the hanging pawn. Now, what can he do? He wishes he could castle, but he can't. 
that would be just a horrible move, right? This pawn is hanging immediately. Bishop takes h7, and he will get mated. So that is not possible. The most obvious response would be that he takes your knight. And after bishop takes g5, you should once again evaluate the situation. Every time there's a peace trade or a pawn push, the position changes. And whenever it changes, you need a new assessment. So we already evaluate, evaluated the position and some factors don't change. We still have more control of the center. We have more space. Uh, the material was equal and it is still equal. But now white has the pair of bishops against the knight and the bishop. The king is still bad, right? Of course, having the pair of bishops is something that many of us love. So this is a peace trade that favors white. Also because the dark squares in black's camp are weakened. Look at the d6 square, the e7 square. And who knows, maybe on the king's side too, there will be dark squares that are weak. Since black has no longer a dark squared bishop, this could be an important factor to have in mind. So what happens if black castles? Because that's what he wants to do. He wants to castle. What happens in this position? We see that we have these dangerous bishops, a bishop on this diagonal, and then the other bishop here, also close to the black king. But the pawns are healthy, protecting the black king, right? It doesn't look like he's getting mated, or maybe I'm wrong. What do you think about this position? Is this king safe on the king side right now? Let's evaluate that, and what could white do? I see Sammy's proposing queen h5, which definitely is a move that you should look at, threatening mating one. Queen e4 could be another option, threatening mating one. And there's another beautiful move. I see Carlos has suggested it. Well done, Carlos. Bishop to f6. So queen h5 and queen e4 are both good moves and probably winning too. But the most forcing, the most powerful move in this position is bishop to f6. Now, what is the point of this move? if black captures the bishop it's a peace sacrifice why did we give up this bishop carlos let us know <laughs> what was your plan and yes john we will look at queen takes c3 later on we will look at every possibility don't worry guys this is just the main line if black castles so g takes f6 what shall we do why did we sacrifice that bishop all right Bishop takes h7, another bishop sacrifice. Yes, it's possible. In this position, actually, this is one of the winning moves. And there's also another possibility, simply taking on f6. It's incredible how this little pawn move, e takes f6, can win on the spot. What is the threat after e takes f6? Queen g4, queen g7 mate. What can black do about it? Well, he can try to move the rook and escape with the king, but it doesn't help. He gets mated. What about another try? What if he moves the king to h8? That does not help either. Queen h5. And now you see why we played bishop f6. Thanks to this pawn on f6, black can never push f5 or g6. There used to be a g pawn and it used to be possible to play f5. So there's no pawn push. It's made just with this bishop, the queen on h5, and the pawn on f6. I have an entire chapter, actually more than one chapter, on how to attack in each scenario. When the, king's, when the opponent's king is in the middle of the board, when he castles on the same flank, and when he castles opposite flanks. So in each scenario, you need a different strategy. And this is one of the scenarios here where a pawn on f6 is helping you give mate. So thanks to this pawn, black cannot bring more defenders to the help of the king. You see that there's, it's not possible to open the seventh rank. It's not possible to bring the rook. Too many moves and not, not possible because of the f6 pawn. So this is one of the many possibilities in this position. Of course, queen h5 with the idea of provoking g6, then queen h6, and bishop f6 
is also a winning idea. Here, the only thing is that you need to calculate what if h6, but we know about this sacrifice already, right? So there were more possibilities. Queen h5 is, of course, a winning move as well. The point is not which move you pick, actually, after castle. If there are many ways to win, it's basically depending on your style, which one you prefer. The most important is that in this moment, White had to realize that since Black's king was still in the middle of the board and Black was undeveloped, you had to start hitting right now. You had to take the initiative right now. And therefore, knight g5 is the strongest move and not what happened in the game. Bishop a6 happened in the game. This is very surprising to me that you see the opponent's king in the middle of the board and you start playing on the queen's side instead of attacking the king. And you see that white was a player with 2100 so i've picked many games in my master method that were played by club players from the rating 1200 up to 2200 because i wanted to have examples where club players make mistakes in some of the scenarios and in other scenarios where they find brilliant ideas too so of course it's not only about mistakes but in general the examples i picked are examples played by club players because I think that these are the scenarios that you will face in your games. Doesn't really matter what's your rating. This is a course for a wide range of club players. It is a course for you if you are stuck on a level because I'm not teaching chess knowledge. I assume you already have lots of chess knowledge. This is about how to think in each situation. So here, what you had to think about was the king and not the queen side or not this pawn, it's the king. And that's why knight g5 is the strongest move. Now let's go through the move that, that Johan was asking about. So bishop takes g5, bishop takes, and if black does not castle, but plays queen takes c3. And here, we shall reassess the situation because the material is not equal anymore. Black is a pawn up. So what does white have for the sacrificed pawn? Let's think about this position for a moment and evaluate what does white have for this pawn that we have just given up on c3 and what shall be the right move. <laughs> I see Carlos is saying, I confess you, I think counting lines and moves before to think any strategy well this is what i want to help you with i want to help every club player who thinks about moves and calculates first lines variations candidate moves i want to reorganize your thinking i believe that many of you are capable of so much more you could jump a couple of hundred rating points simply by thinking the right way so my whole method is about showing you how to think in an organized, schematic way. This is what we are trying to practice today and what my training course is about. So don't worry if you are in a situation where you see a position and you start calculating immediately. It happens to many of us. It used to happen to me. But then I trained myself to first assess the position, find the key factors in the position, and then play against those factors. So until you don't know what the position requires, what are the key factors in the position, you can't find the best moves. I mean, that would be like lottery. Sometimes you guess it, sometimes you don't. So what do you guys think about queen takes c3? We are a pawn down as white and we shall do something i see as a suggestion rook c1 that is a possibility but here let's not forget our main factor this king how can we get to that king do you think there's a forcing line that would make that king suffer because for the moment it looks like a very safe piece i wonder who can find the move first Let's get to that king right now. 
Queenie for the suggestion by Gerardo. That's possible so that you protect the D4 pawn and also you prevent costling. That is an option. But let's see if there's something even more forcing. Go crazy. Now, this is the moment to go crazy. If you know that on Chess24, I have my lovely colleague, Sopika Gramishvili, who is Miss Tactics. And I will tell you now, go and play like Miss Tactics. Go aggressive, sacrifice. That king is vulnerable. Queen f3 is an option. Queen f3 is also an option. And I see the correct move. Nitish, Vishva, producer Chris, so many of you. Anibal, oh, I wish I could read out all the names. Everyone who said rook takes f7, wow. Well done. So what is the point of blundering your rook? Now, you could explain it maybe. Now we are a rook down. Why? Why did we give up the rook? Who can calculate it first? Where's the mating attack? Rook takes f7, yeah, but what is the follow-up? I would like to see it. I'd like to see the follow-up. Do you want to resign here? Or is there a follow-up? Who will say it first in the chat? What is the right follow-up? Nitish is saying queen h5 check. That's possible, but is it the most forcing? Think about this is one candidate move. Another candidate move is queen f3 or queen f2 and rook f1. Try to find first the most forcing ones where black's options are limited. After this check, he has the possibility to move the king or play g6. If you give a check on the f file, he has less options. So let's go. Anyone? Rook f1. Good job. Now, black doesn't have many options. If king g8, what's the follow up? Simply queen f3. It's surprising, but there's no defense. And black can even give a check. But who cares? You can just move the king and say, your turn. We are threatening queen f7 mate. And if you prevent it with bishop e8, that blocks the f8 square. So it will be queen f8 mate. There's no pawn move that could help because the bishop from d3 is taking away the h7 square. g6 doesn't help either. Queen f4 only helps to make the game one move longer. There's no defense. This is it. Incredible, isn't it? Rook takes f7. You can also start with queen f3 check, of course. And you shall always look at other moves. Like if rook f1, you should calculate what happens after king e8. So king e8, and now what? And this is the moment when you would go for this check. So there's no king move. This is very forcing. He can only play g6, and now you take on g6. We've sacrificed pretty much half of our army, a rook and a bishop, but it's mate on board. Did you like this example? Please let me know. And it started out from a position Let's just remind everyone that we started from this position where it doesn't look like black is about to be mated. Now, how did we discover the idea that we shall start attacking the king right now? We discovered it because we evaluated the position. And we, by evaluating the position, realized that the king was the biggest issue in this position. This is the key factor. And it's not always the case. So don't think that it will always help to attack the opponent's king, but it depends on the position. And on, in this position, the king on e8 is a problem. It's not castled. And even when it castles, remember after knight g5, even after takes takes castling, it wasn't safe because of bishop f6 or queen h5. So the king was the key factor, and that was the key to winning this position. Since White did not realize it, he didn't evaluate the position correctly, he played bishop a6, and then he started playing on the queen side. And that is the reason why you should first evaluate the position. Oh, I see Fiona is online. Hi, Fiona. I don't know if you see my Skype as well, but hi, Fiona. So. Here, we are playing on the queen side. That's what happened in the game. But is it how white had to play? No, because the key factor was the king and not 
some queen side pawn pushes of course you see that yeah maybe in the future you could create a post pawn here but that's not what the position needs the position needs that you take advantage of the opponent's game as soon as you can because later he will castle and not let you do anything against that king so that was the key factor let's move on to the next example i hope that you enjoyed this one this is a completely different one when i'm going to flip the board it is black to move but don't look for a move remember this is not about looking for a move this is no lottery and of course in the previous position there were many other options we just cannot analyze every line because then it would take one position for the whole hour to cover i would like you to have a look at more positions that's why i'm skipping some of the lines if you want to analyze the previous position you can go back to the video and set it up on your own chessboard and analyze it in in an end in a chess based program in online or on a real chess board depends on how you prefer analyzing but now let's move on to this one it is black to move after bishop e2 so i'm showing you the last move of white that will be the context that white has just played bishop e2 for now you shouldn't look at any moves you should just remember that white has just played bishop e2 now let's analyze the position let's evaluate it I will, for one more moment, show you the list. In case you are just joining us, how can I do it? Can I? So, in case you are just joining us, I'm Anna Rudolph, and this is my master method. We are practicing currently one of the chapters from my training course. And together with my training course, you will receive lots of bonuses. Those bonuses include bonus chapters, puzzles, summaries printable PDFs that I have written and I have designed them. So if you don't like the colors, it's on me. I chose these colors and I edited them. It's all on me. I hope that you like it. Please, please do let me know that you like it. I think it looks pretty nice for someone who doesn't know about design much. So we are looking at the evaluation process and these five points. Number one, material. Number two, pawn structure. Number three, king safety number four, peace activity, and number five, context. First of all, we will look at every position and see the first four points. These numbers don't necessarily mean an order. We just need to start analyzing in an order, but in some positions, in many positions, <laughs> king safety is the key, but not every position. So we will first look at material, then pawn structure, then king safety, then peace activity. And when you have looked at all four, then you should decide which one is the key factor. So this list doesn't tell you that material is always the most important. It doesn't tell you that king safety is just third important. This is not a priority order. This is just an order in which we look at these factors. Once you have looked at the four factors, you should choose. By analyzing these four, you should know which one is the key in that particular position. So let's do that. Let's look at these four, decide which one is the key factor or which ones are, because many times there will be more factors that are crucial. And then we put it in context. Context is whose turn it is, what was the opponent's last move, what does he want, what is his plan, because we will always think prophylactic and we shall know what our opponent wants to do. Let's go back to the position. I hope that I did not mess it up. And as I said, it's black to move. Don't look for moves, please. Let's evaluate the position. Number one, material. I think you can know that. Material. Oh, thank you, JSP. I see that you already have my master method and you you like it. That that just incredible when I receive such feedback. Gerardo, no, it's not available on Chess24. This is an iChess master method. Actually, I can share the link here, I think. Can I? Let's try. This is my master method. This is... Oh, it doesn't let me. Doesn't let me share it. It's in the description of the video. So if someone could copy that, doesn't let me share it. But if you go to iChess.net, it shows you. 
Anna Rudolph Master Method, smash the barriers to your chest success. It's on a 50% discount for one more day. Actually, let me show it because I just I just don't think I can share the I don't think I can share the link. Why not? That's so weird, right? So give me give me a second. Bear with me for a moment. I will show you right now. I I believe. Can I? Oh my, messing things up. No, let's go back to the chessboard. I don't think I can show it to you. And while you are thinking, I will try to open it separately because I thought I could show. I wanted to show you. There's the course. Give me a moment. So in the meantime, first of all, material, then bone structure, center, space, open lines, open files, weaknesses in the structure. King safety is number three, but could be the most important. You never know. And number four, peace activity. Let's look at those four factors and decide which ones are the crucial in this position. You are playing with the black pieces. In the meantime, I think I managed to bring it up. So after we discuss this position, I will show you where you can get my course. Oh, thank you, Johan, for answering Gerardo. And yes, it's only until tomorrow, the discount. So you should really, really hurry up if you want to get it half price. Guys, don't tell me moves yet, please. All right, Anas is saying black is a pawn up. Something to point out. So material does count in this position. Black is a pawn up. We are a pawn up. What else can you see? Black is a pawn up. Is black developed already? Not completely, right? The bishop is not developed yet and the rook is not developed yet either. So we still lack some development. We are a pawn up. That pawn up is here. But if you look at the pawn structure, and in this position, the pawn structure is crucial because when you see this pawn chain, c4, d5, and for black, c5, d6, e5, you realize that the position is very much closed. And that's good news. You know why it's good news that the position is closed? Because our king would be horribly weak if the position was open. Imagine the very same position without e pawn and d pawns and c pawns. Let's take away these pawns in your imagination. Take them off of the board. These pawns, take them away. Imagine the position without these pawns. Now, it's not only that we wouldn't have a pawn up, but our king would be extremely vulnerable. Now, you, don't, you normally don't castle and start pushing those pawns in front of your king, do you? This is what we learned. Don't do that. Don't weaken your king. Now, let me tell you that in this position, it is okay to push f5 and g5 because the position, the center, is closed, there are no open files, there are no diagonals for these bishops to attack your king. So crucial factor in this position is that the king is safe because of the pawn structure. So all these factors that you evaluate with the evaluation guideline, you never take them one by one. Yes, we take an order, we go material, pawn structure, king safety, peace activity, but all of them are in context with one another we are a pawn up yes does white have something in com as compensation he's got a pair of bishops that could compensate in some circumstances maybe not here you don't know it yet but what you shouldn't realize is that your king is not weak even though it looks weak because of pushing these pawns it's not weak because there's no access to your king and that is because of the pawn structure so you shall never say, oh, Black's king is weak. It's not weak, it's open, unless the opponent can attack your king. He cannot attack your king, so it's okay. It's all closed. Now, we should always take the last move of the opponent, bishop e2, 
into account and that is the context we have a pawn up we still need to develop but since the position is closed actually you have more time to develop your pieces too in open positions it's crucial that you develop as quickly as possible in closed positions you have a lot more time to maneuver and develop your pieces slowly but after bishop e2 white has a concrete threat and many of you have spotted that white wants to push f4 a discovered attack against the queen and to create pawn breaks if he manages to push f4 and then capture either on g5 or e5 he will start opening up the position and your king the king on g8 will be weaker so you should not allow f4 first of all for the bishops pair of bishops the bishops love open positions so white wants to open the position for his bishops and because that would mean that your king is weaker therefore in this position without knowing the move you already detected that you want to keep the position as closed as possible you don't want f4 to happen you don't want the position to open up now let's go for the candidate moves what moves do prevent f4 let's see let's see in the chat thank you johan for the link i see i see that you managed to find it and link it thank you so everyone in the chat johan has the link to the master method that's where you can see the entire list all the chapters 17 chapters <laughs> bonus links bonus chapters bonus guidelines pgns puzzles and several months of work if you want to know what is in the master method so f4 yes good job f4 is definitely a move hi graphics graphics is i really want to thank you for the picture you tweeted me because I, i've already seen graphics he has my training course he has just purchased it and he tweeted a picture of it that is just so awesome every one of you please if you have my training course already please tweet me or use the hashtag Anna Rudolph method because i want to know you i want to know my pupils really i want to see how it is helping you if it is helping you and also tell me if it doesn't help you because that would mean that i did something wrong so far all the feedback i received is very positive and i so 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 appreciate it so f4 as black the best move another option to prevent f4 would be to push g4 but remember what we want we want to keep the position closed g4 prevents the discovered attack but hey why are we opening the position up for white now look at this position just simply by trading a pair of pawns these bishops are a lot stronger this bishop has a dangerous diagonal and this one is attacking the h6 pawn the rook has an open file and your king is now really becoming a target so very careful be very careful about these characters when you realize that you should keep the position closed then stick to it f4 is the correct move congratulations everyone who picked f4 that's the best move you prevent f4 you gain even even more space now you can develop your bishop to f5 and in general we are a healthy pawn up and we have prevented white's idea now white played g4 and it is your turn again how would you react to this pawn push well done Anival and well done Carlos I see that you all said f4 and Ridurian and Nanad so many of you I really I really really now look at the chat and I think everybody everybody said f4 I'm very impressed Diego you as well I see it I see it so what about g4 how would you react to g4 knowing what we have analyzed and what we want the position to be like All right, one option, as Carlos said, is to capture with Ampas. This is a word that I never managed to pronounce correctly, French. Ampas, Ampas, Ampas. Well, depending on how you want to pronounce it, it's 
the capture that would be f takes g3 and pause that's an option another option is queen h3 well done and also queen g6 now let me tell you one important thing in most of the positions there will be more than what could move so how do you pick one move preferences personal preferences if f takes g3 and queen g6 are similar then the way to decide between those two moves is which one you like more just like you might have a preference for the color blue or green or red or brown or black i don't know what's your favorite color but that's something personal and also in chess on the chessboard even though engines would give you a number this would have a certain evaluation in a number and this would have another evaluation as a number but even even if those numbers are not the same for a human if this option and this option are similar then it's really a personal preference which one you like more do you want to keep the position closed still just drop back with the queen you can open later if you want with h5 although remember it's opening your king as well but if you want to keep the position closed you can play queen g6 what happens with the pawn structure is that later we have a pawn up so we cannot keep the position closed forever because that would mean that you never convert your pawn advantage right even though we know that in general we don't want to open the position because of the king vulnerability vulnerability that is a difficult word right so we don't want to open the position in general but there has been a lot of change in the position remember we started out like this in this position the only king that can be vulnerable is the black king with g5 and f5 pushed already this king with the position open remember removing these pawns would mean that the black king is in trouble the white king is fine the position changes with each capture and with each pawn push d4 has just changed the position completely after queen g6 which is one of the good options the other good option is capturing we will have a look at that but after dropping back with the queen to g6 look at this position now we should always reassess the position after pawn pushes and captures peace captures so the pawn has moved from g2 to g4 and that is a huge difference now both kings are in similar situation they could be both vulnerable imagine white tries to attack on the queen side open the b file and if you take bishop takes b4 the d6 pawn could be vulnerable now in this moment you could think okay i want to develop my bishop so that i can bring my rook what if i take but there's a very concrete line that's thanks to this factor here suddenly it's the pawn up that matters and that also this king is weak e4 if you push e4 just look at this position it changes a lot now you want to open this position because if white captures and he can be in trouble you can this you can decide whether you want to take with the queen and give a check after which if bishop f3 you can take on e1 and then grab the g4 pawn but immediately i meant take here take here and then you take the pawn this is one option but in general it's just to understand that every pawn move changes the position so because of g4 suddenly the king is a factor too and that's why suddenly you do want to open the position but you want to open it in the right way you want to open it in a way that this king is weak and your one is fine so you, this is what you want this king to be weak this pawn to be weak and your king to be fine and suddenly this pass pawn protected pass pawn is an extra this is our pawn up how cool protected pass pawn so this is one option and the other option is that after after g4 you take on d3 and if queen takes which is the only move now you shall detect what happened we have traded the f pawn for the g pawn the position opens up to some extent and that means a new situation you should be able to detect after each and every move of the opponent what does he want 
this is a crucial part of my method to understand every time what does your opponent want so let's answer that question after queen takes g3 what does white want Nana, to answer your question, yes, I, I think in every position, the key to understanding the position and to finding the right move is to first evaluate the position. So imagine this is basically how everything works, works in life. If you go to the doctor, you have symptoms. The doctor always asks you about your symptoms. He cannot just give you a medicine. He cannot tell you the solution without diagnosing your situation. So that's what we are doing in chess too. First, we diagnose what the position needs, and then you will know what you should give to the position, what should be the moves. It's not the other way around. You cannot really find the best moves without understanding the key characteristics, the key factors of the position. Johan, uh, if you should have if you should be very good at tactics to understand all this no not really of course tactics is one part of chess and there are chapters in my method about tactics about calculation so we are going to improve in that field as well but to evaluate the position what you should have is basic chess understanding and i think many of you are already good at understanding these factors so for instance here you understand that after the capture on g3 with the queen on g3 this king could be in trouble on the g file maybe maybe h4 could come in the future or if the bishop is protected then f4 so you would definitely look at the queen and the king on the same file now this is not magic this is this is not something that you need to be a grandmaster to understand this every one of us can understand this the difference between this that when i ask you to do it and when you play a game i want you to learn to use these to, the, to use this thinking process in your games basically that is what my method is about so i teach you a schematic thinking that can be applied in your chess games and once you acquire this thinking you will always detect the right plan depending on your level it will be a different level of course when it's a grandmaster and when it's a club player but you will always be at your best and find the best plan according to your level if you analyze the position if you detect the key factors so it's not about how good you are at tactics it's not about what's your rating any rating level what i want you to be able to do is to always be at your very best so objectively finding the best solution in the position and never blundering blundering is one one huge huge thing actually that i will talk to you about after this position ridderian yes i will also answer about the rating target group and all that stuff about the course after this position i just feel so weird talking to you without the webcam and without being able to show you things so let's finish with this position and then i answer your questions all right so after queen takes g3 yes it's true now this this pawn is weaker than before i see one of you pointing out yeah carlos talked about the f3 pawn um the, the queen is more active on g3 for sure so that is a a good change for white what happens to the queen so this is you see the pawn is weaker but what he gains is that the queen is more active the queen has a semi-open file and he might be able to push either h4 or f4 in the future if you want to prevent that for good you can remove the queen from h5 it's not a threat at the moment but next move i'm not gonna take that pawn <laughs> next move could be rookie one and at f4 so prophylactic thinking is also about knowing what the opponent wants if it's his turn again he's gonna go rookie one and f4 
Let's prevent it already. Let's drop back with the queen. Queen g6. So now it doesn't make sense to push f4. And if h4, then you can play knight h5. Winning a tempo and then placing the knight here means that you have, you have maneuvered your knight to f4 in order to, first of all, improve your piece. The knight is much more active on f4. And secondly, it's protecting your king. So there are situations where, for instance, here, you see the g5 pawn is hanging. One way of protecting it would be to go passive and play knight h7. But always try to find the creative solution. So don't go passive. When something is hanging, when something is attacked, don't go defensive immediately. See if you can solve the problem in an active way. And here that means attacking the opponent's queen. And next move, whether it's queen g2 or queen h2, you jump to f4 with your knight. That covers the diagonal, so the g5 pawn is not hanging anymore, and this piece is much more active. So this is just to show that depending on your style, you can either go for this variation or the other one that we have seen. Personally, I think it's a lot easier when you just place your queen, queen on g6 and you push e4 in the moment you want to open the position. So if you want a more simple way of playing, I would definitely recommend that you choose this, even though f takes g3 should have a similar evaluation according to the engine. But I think this position is somewhat more complex. White might be able to push f4 if you are not careful. He might be able to push h4 and so on and so on. But let me bring back the, web the webcam because I really want to talk to you guys. And I don't like that. I don't, I don't, I don't see what what I'm showing, I see the chessboard, but I I want to show, yes, here I am. So I was pointing at this one. I was pointing at the PDFs. And I wanted to talk to you about the training because this is just one of the many chapters. So there are 17 chapters in my training course and 17 hours. It says 15 hours, but together with the bonus material, it's 17 hours. Now, what I recommend is that if you have the course, don't learn it all at once. 17 hours is a lot. If you work or if you are a student, if you just have one hour per week to study, that's more than enough. I just want it to be a regular learning. It doesn't have to be a lot at once, but let's say you can learn one hour a week. That's already perfect. It means that in three, four months with an hour or two hours a week, you will be done with the course. And what this course is about is teaching you the right way of thinking, the right thought process. And it's not so easy to change what's inside here. I had to learn that myself, and it doesn't happen from one day to the other. So those of you who already have purchased my training course, please have in mind that this is not something you should learn from one day to the other. It will take time. But if you take your time to go through the chapters, it will really become second nature. And it won't be weird for you that, oh, I need to evaluate the position. Blah. Anna told me I have to evaluate the position. Well, if you want to understand chess, you should. But it will only be difficult at the beginning. Once you do it, when you are training, and then you start applying it in your own games, it will be a lot easier, believe me. And this is just one of the many things that I teach. Another crucial, very important part of my method is preventing blunders. Because I think club players, you guys have quite a good knowledge already. You know lots of openings, or you know very well your opening. You, you study the games of grandmasters, you follow events, you solve tactics, you play online, you practice. But those will not help if you, from time to time, blunder. So my course is also a cure hopefully, because I put a lot of effort into trying to find a cure to blunders. So there's a chapter about how to spot tactical motives. And you can watch that video already on iChess. So if you go to iChess, you're here, right? Before, before, well, not right now, but when I say goodbye after the webinar, go to iChess's YouTube channel, the videos, and there you will see the how to spot tactical motives. That's one of the chapters from my master method. That's for you to have an idea 
what is it that you can expect from my training course so in that chapter i teach what are the factors that show you how to know when there's a win because in a puzzle book they tell you that it's made into it they tell you it's why to move and win and in the game mm -mm, no one tells you that so by knowing what are the factors you should look for you will not miss winning chances that's one end of the blunders so when your opponent blunders and i also want you to never blunder again now for that you need to know everything about how to spot tactics so that chapter that's already on youtube and the other chapter that's in my training course together those two chapters will really really be a, a treatment a cure that's what i hope but if it's not do let me know so the training course can someone please link it in the chat is it here is it here where's the chat if someone please could be so kind to link the master method because there's a 50 percent discount to it for one more day here is it here <clears throat> imagine i'm pointing at it if, if i wish i knew where i am so the training course is for anyone who feels stuck any club player doesn't really matter what's your rating i would say from 1000 1200 up to 2100 that's basically a very broad rating but it's because it's not the chess skill the chess knowledge itself that i want to teach i'm not teaching you a certain opening i'm not teaching you how you should develop your pieces i'm not teaching you what you should do in the Nidorf middle game or what is a rookie game i'm not teaching anything like that that depends on what is your rating what i'm teaching you is how to think effectively so how to think in the opening how to think in the middle game and how to think in the end game and also how to think when you are learning so it's basically the whole thought process that i am applying i've been applying this thought process for the last 10 years at least over 10 years before that i didn't know everything about it but in the last i think last 12 years i've been applying this thought process and that's what helps me in my games so that's all in my master method i've never thought about this before so this is pretty much revealing my secrets because i never really told anyone i i don't have private pupils anymore because i don't have time to give lessons that's why i wanted to record a training course so that i can teach you what i know even if I don't have time for giving private lessons, this is a way for me to help you and to make you become my pupil if you want to. I mean, it's no force, only if you want to. But if you look at my other videos, you probably know me from Chess24. I have videos as Miss Strategy about middle games. I have videos with Sopico about Magnus Carlsen. It's all on Chess24. On Chess.com, I analyze my game against the world. It's a vote chess game. I have end game videos on chess.com and regular commentary. And all those are useful, but those are videos that are always for a target rating group and something very concrete, a concrete topic to learn. For instance, the isolated pawns, the hanging pawns, opponent game. It's always a certain topic. So I do still want you to follow me and look at those videos. Most of them are for free. <laughs> But the training course is completely different because it's not a chess lesson per se. It's not something that you would expect in a chess book. It's more than that. It's about what's inside here. Not only psychology, I do talk about psychology too, but what I was explaining here is that what I do step by step in a game in each situation i'm telling you that and i want you to have the right thought process because i really feel like most of you could jump 100 200 300 400 rating points if you would have a schematic thinking a disciplined logical thinking instead of just jumping from one variation to the other instead of just guessing what is the best continuation never missing a winning opportunity never blundering again and always knowing what to do now how does that sound because that's what i want to teach you in my master method so if somebody could please link it thank you johan i see that it's here thank you graphics i i don't think i'm a great speaker but i love speaking <laughs> I, I guess that's just it thank you anderson 
and there's a lot more so today was a training a very brief training this is what we could do today about how to evaluate the position we were following this guideline that comes with the training course these are free printables that I have written myself I designed it myself that's why it looks like this whether you find it nice or not so nice this is my design skill but my chess skills are better than my designing skills so the training course is on 50 percent five zero is it this way <laughs> for one more day you have only one more day to get it half price the link is here in the chat wherever it is why i'm so blurry now so the link is somewhere here outer space on youtube chat and that's where you can click so all in all this has been a pleasure for me to stream for you the webinar covered a very small part of my training method as i said it's a 17 hour course so i can't really teach you in 50 minutes what i teach you in 17 hours but i hope that you now have a better idea if you still don't know whether this course is for you please go to the videos on ihs youtube channel and see the how to spot tactical motives video because that is one of the key chapters in my master method that is about how not to win a miss again so after this webinar please do have a look at that video and then you will know whether this is something that you want whether this is something that you need for your chess improvement or not now my objective with the whole training course is that you get through those barriers and those barriers but I believe are the barriers that prevent club players from improving are, as I mentioned, some of them already, not finding the win. So missing winning opportunities is one. Then blundering is another one. Number two. Number three, not finding the right plan. That's when you don't evaluate the position and you don't understand the key factors. Number four is when you miss the opponent's plan. The same goes there. If you don't evaluate the position, you don't know what the opponent wants and you will miss his idea and that will lead to bad results too and number five is about psychology and not being very effective up here so effective thinking and effective thought process is what my master method is about if you get it please tweet me please send me pictures i love seeing pictures actually and even if you're not a picture guy just tweet me I'm Anna underscore chess. Let me know what you think about my course and let me know in a couple of months because I don't want you to learn it in three days. I want you to learn it for several months, one hour per week, two hours per week, and then you will definitely be a much better chess player. That is what I believe, but if it's not helping you, do let me know. Then I did something wrong. I think so far, all the feedback I received was very good and I'm so happy for it. I'm so grateful. It just makes me feel so proud of my work when, when I actually see that it's working. But I do want to know whether you are my pupil too. So tweet me on Twitter or send me a Facebook message on my Facebook page. Tomorrow, by the way, I will do a Facebook Live, a Halloween Facebook Live and a Q&A about my training course. So if I did not answer your question today, tomorrow I will do a Facebook Live on my Facebook page, Halloween themed. Oh my God. Halloween themed Q&A on my Facebook page. I will announce it now. This is actually something that you are the first to know about it. I've just announced it. I did not tell anyone about it. So you are the first to know about it. Tomorrow is the last day to get my training course for 50%. And who doesn't love saving? I would definitely love saving. So get it tomorrow and not another day because that's when it's half price. Any questions? Because I'm about to say goodbye. Oh, graphics, you have your cheat sheets beside you. Yeah, these are the cheat sheets. I call them cheat sheets, but they are only for learning. They are not for your games, right? So you should have them when you are learning. These are the cheat sheets. Graphics, you are a great designer, so please don't judge my designing skills. I hope that this looks decent. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Chess Blades. <laughs> Yes, Chess Blades, you are right that Bobby Fisher believes in best moves and not psychology. That's why we should learn about psychology in my training course too, because you should be objective. If you are objective, then psychology doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who is your opponent. If you are objective, 
you will find the best response, whether it's Magnus Carlsen in front of you or your daughter. You should just be objective and then no fear, no overconfidence will interfere. It's just you and the best, objectively best responses. Now, I really want to stay and talk longer about the training course, but I can't. I was supposed to stay for an hour. I was told that this is a one hour webinar. Tomorrow I will be back, Q&A on my Facebook live. Please stay tuned for the updates. So you can follow me on Twitter, Anna underscore chess, and I have a Facebook page, Anna Rudolph. That's where I will do the Facebook live tomorrow about the training course. See you there if you want to see the Halloween thingy going up here. I think I will do it live, the whole Facebook Halloween painting and stuff. Yeah, well, chess streamer doing Halloween makeup live. I hope you enjoyed this webinar and tomorrow I will answer more questions. It's been a pleasure to stream for you. Link to the <laughs> course is somewhere here and also in the description of this video. Thank you. And once again, if you are my pupil, it's a pleasure to meet you. And I really would love to know from you. So send me a message on Facebook, tweet me on Twitter, reach out to me the way you want. And I just love to hear from you. I want to know what you think about the course. I want to know if it's helping your chess. I want to know what's your chess goal because I want to know all my pupils and I want to know what is your chess dream. What do you want to achieve? Because once you know it, it's a lot easier to work for it. So. Do let me know about your chess dreams, your chess goals, and I hope that my training course will help you get your chess potential because those barriers are easy to break if you fix this, the thought process that prevents you from improving. This has been Anna Rudolph, live webinar on iChess. Do get the free video, how to spot tactical motives, and then you can decide for one more day whether you want my course on a 50% sale price. Last day. Be quick. Bye-bye. I wish I knew how to stop this. <laughs> Bye again.